Uh, other questions now? All right, I'm going to, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to go ahead and answer these questions. How does the phrase structure of language function as an accommodation of language to fit the structures of the brain, according to Deakin? Um, it's th the phrase structure allows different pieces of the processing of a sentence or of language to be done in different parts of the brain at the same time. Right? And so that helps uh, to uh, ease the burden on the brain of processing language. How are indexical relationships of words to objects processed by the brain according to Deakin? Uh, he talks about how um, linkages between the sound processing and sort of multimodal processes, of sound processing versus vision processing, vision processing versus tactile processing, those relationships are the ones that set up indexical relationships um, of words to objects. And he also talks about how grammatical function words um, like which or that that, um, that separate off different phrases in a sentence are uh, important for setting up these indexical correlations uh, between different parts of sentences and that, um, um, and that helps the brain. And then finally, how does the brain use the separation of left and right hemispheres to help with language processing according to Deakin? Uh, he talks about how um, the left hemisphere uh, tends to be reserved, not, not universally, but tends to be reserved for the, the more of the short-term processing needs and the, and the right hemisphere can do more long-term processing needs and also can, um, can be reserved for recognizing larger uh, likenesses uh, between sign-sign uh, and object-object relationships. Okay. Uh, questions? Yes? Number one? The phrase structure, so, so the phrase structure, you remember it's like the noun phrases and the verb phrases and, and the way it's like a tree structure, right? And the tree structure he's saying is helpful to the brain because it allows, by, by allowing us to sort of break up its, a sentence into these component parts, it allows the brain to sort of process each part separately, right? And that's how it helps the brain to process the language, okay? Okay, so, yes? How are indexical relations of words to objects processed? This one, is that what you're talking about? For this question number two. So how are indexical of words to objects processed? And he says, he says that it tends to be, uh, linking words to objects tends to be done by um, linking up one type of sense to another type of sense. So vision to, he to sound. So if you hear something and then there's a kind of another sound that sort of um, kind of corroborates what you've seen, that that's a kind of indexical relationship. Or you touch something that you've seen and it sort of confirms what you've seen, that's another kind of indexical relationship. And that's, that's how the brain is, is processing it. That's how, he, that's, that's how he describes that. Does that make sense? Okay. 